Okay, welcome back everybody. If you've been following along, this is going to be part three of the series, um, the 454 into the 35 foot Silverton. Um, we left off last time, the engine was running, it sounded great, but we weren't getting oil pressure, or at least the gauge wasn't showing oil pressure. So since then, uh, we purchased a uh, oil priming pump that I've got the drill now hooked up to down here. And that basically is just a long rod that has that little deal on the bottom of it so you can go into the oil pump. And so we've got a uh, manual gauge hooked up to where the uh, warning sensor is on the, um, down here on the side of the block. You can see where that hose is going into right there. And that's that plastic line going all the way up here. So um, we wanted to verify that at least the oil pump itself is working and then we can rule out that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press the trigger on the drill you get drill you guys are going to see this oil pressure gauge go up when i do that and as you can see with the manual drill pushing it we've got oil pressure so now we know for sure that the pump is working um, and we can move on with uh, maybe fixing the wiring issue Okay, so we're getting ready to put the distributor back in here before we do that you got to make sure so before we pulled it out we marked on the on the on the uh intake mantle here this white mark and then we marked on the distributor a white mark where the rotor was facing because we knew we weren't going to crank the engine over and we didn't want to lose our our timing so uh, before you stab it in you got to make sure that that little oil pump shaft down there is going to line up also with your uh end of your distributor where the oil pump goes into and i've taken and lined that up with that tool we have and now I'm going to attempt to put this all back in in the exact same manner that we pulled it out as so we don't lose our timing. So the gears, I think I can put this up here. So the gears that the distributor mesh into off the cam, uh, off the cam are, are uh, um, hex or uh, there's a word for that they're they're spiral cut right so as you drop this distributor down you notice the rotor is turning at the same time because it's meshing with those gears so if you want to line the distributor rotor up with the mark that we have here you actually have to put it back here a little bit and allow it to kind of seat in place and turn like that and that's kind of the way it's got to go and then at this point we have to now we're just hoping that it lines up with the uh uh oh, I've got that on wrong. That's facing the wrong way. Come on. There we go. So up, turn it, and then allow it to seat. Sort of like that. Okay, you're now pointing to number one now. Well, it's not on number one. It's on, it's the pointing. Rotor, the rotor has to point to that line. The, going, yeah, the rotor has to point that line off it's just a bit. Way now on the rotor or not? I think this is going to be more accurate about right here. As long as we can get it down onto. See, this is this is the spline we want it to go to. Oh, that's too far past it. So we might have to turn. Where's our mark at? See, I think I'm off because our mark is not lining up. We're too far off, so we're a tooth off right here. So if I go back one tooth down, this is where we want it. But the problem is now our oil uh, shaft isn't lined up. So That's why it's not turn the oil. right. So I have to turn the oil shaft probably that way a little bit. it right there lined up we've got a rotor lined up with the line on our distributor and the line on the distributor lined up with the line on the manifold that's exactly the point where we pulled it off before we started tackling this oil pressure problem all right got the distributor back together don't forget to put the the hole down clamp down there at the bottom uh we got a hand tight because we're still got to do the timing on this so it's going to be a little loose we can turn it with our hands Got all the coolant lines back on. I had to pull the thermostat housing and coolant lines off in order to get the drill down in there, but now all that's back together. At this point, we're going to 
He's gonna crank the engine again, and we're gonna kind of watch this gauge and see if it moves this time. Yep. Yep. Okay. I got up to 40. Oh, so it's actually working up there now. Yeah, the gate. It's probably that wire. Yeah. So we did, one thing I didn't show you guys, we did find a wire coming off of this harness down here that wasn't connected on the, uh, well, this one here. Oh, Ooh, one right there, right there. This wire on this harness, a little short stubby one. That's the one we think contributed to our issue. So uh, this whole time it was already building oil pressure. We just didn't have all the wires connected. So a shame on us for not <laughs> labeling everything, I guess. But I think at this point we can go ahead and try timing it. All right, ready? Yep. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for today. We have some wires we need to fix, but we got it running really smoothly. We got it timed up really nice. Um, we're gonna have to run some better grounds for the coil, and we're gonna have to redo some of our wiring connections here that go to the pickup coil for the, uh, the distributor. But besides that, everything's running nice and smooth. We got it timed up here real nice. Um, and we got the uh, timing wire put back the other way. So it's running at about 800 RPMs right now, nice and smooth. And uh, that's gonna be it, that's it. It's, I'm calling that success and uh, uh, that's it, we're done. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you guys like this series, please put it down in the comments and uh, give me a like too if you can. Uh, appreciate it very much. I'll see you guys in the next one.